Not live until I'm watching myself. Hold on, YouTube. I just uh, opened my YouTube thing. I'm seeing if I'm live by watching myself. Looks like I have some type of delay in here in case I whip out a few f bombs. Right. Oh, I do. Oh, whoa, I am I. That's me. Whoa, infinite loop, infinite loop, infinite loop. Whoa, pause, 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 infinite loop. Okay. I'm good. I'm going to close that. Okay. This is... I suppose this is uh, how to build an electric guitar. Now, this has never been done before, a whole series of this from start to finish um, on video. Usually, if you want to see how to build one, you'll see clips. Uh, little clips how to do this, how to do that. I'm going to show you start to finish from a block of wood to one of these babies. Ooh, that's not good. People are asleep. Her name is Eleanor. Whoa, that's good. Okay, now this was the first one that I built. This is made out of Brazilian rosewood. They're a desk, an antique desk from 1859. The desk was going to be tossed into the dumpster. And I said, hey guys, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. I just need to get this extension cord for a second. And also this jigsaw, just so I could, uh make it easier to get into the dumpster. And then zzz, 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 I had all the I had a bunch of planks of uh Brazilian rosewood. Now Brazilian rosewood is um it's an endangered uh, species. So you can't get it anymore. Um I think Gibson guitars they were working with it a few years ago and they were raided by I don't know. What organization would raid you for having Illegal wood. Um, I don't know, those hippie tree huggers. Them. But like the federal ones. I don't know. Anyways, because it's such a dense wood, it'll sink in water, unlike other woods. And that's why it's able, I was able to make it so thin. So very thin. Um, now, I took the back plate off so I can show you the wiring schematic on this. Now, Jimmy Page, um, you can say a lot of things about him. Um, a lot of people say, oh, he plagiarized all of his music. Uh, that's it. You could say that. I'm not here to argue anything. I'm just here to say that he is, you could call him a notable guitarist. Um, and when he would play live, he would, he had this exact wiring schematic uh, set up. So you'd be able to switch between all these different sounds, just with these. Uh, so you'd be able to play all those different songs, play all those different sounds. I believe it's a total of 44 different sounds here. With, why uh, I put these on? These are called push-pull knobs, because you can push them and you can pull them. Uh, this is kind of the a rip off of the the Gibson Les Paul uh, style uh, body, which I like. And I took the liberty of moving this pickup selector switch from up here 
down here because hey it just makes sense I mean hey say I'm playing I want to switch pickups dun, 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 dun. changing tones blah 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 oh let me switch the pickups dun, 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 dun. yeah right anyway so that's that and here we go the infamous oh yeah this is a uh, this is actually this I tore apart a MacBook to get this is actually a MacBook Wi-Fi adapter right here so I sometimes I get some very strange interference now this is ha this is some pretty complicated stuff in the back but at the end of this series it's gonna take me a very long time to complete this long as in a lot of hours not as in a lot of days to complete this but uh, it's a lot of stuff going on in the back you don't have to understand anything about how electricity works to be able to do this okay you don't have to understand anything about how anything works to be able to make this my friend Steve uh, the beginning of the year he, uh, he's a good guitar player, better than I. In fact, he made, he puts me to shame. And, uh, I finally convinced him to build his own electric guitar. So he was saying, oh, no, I don't know how to do this, I don't know how I can't do this, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Steve, man, when I, when I built my first one, I, I, I bought a book that showed you how to do it. And I didn't read the book, I used it as a sanding block. And see these power tool wounds? Yeah, I should have read the book. Anyway, I got it done. See this thing? That big dash? When people ask me, I say, yeah, that's just, it's a natural part. It's a, be it, it's a part of the wood. It's a uh, part of the grain in the wood. It, it's what makes it beautiful, this wood. Actually, what happened was I had this power tool I didn't know how to use, and I was m making the uh, cavity in the back, and I went zip, and I made a hole right through it. So what I did was I took some uh, sawdust, combined it with some wood glue, slapped it on there, let it dry, and then I sanded it off, and it was all fixed. But if anyone asks, don't tell them that. See these things? Those are... NFC stickers. Uh, what those do, if you have a Android device, um, they're usually used to, I don't know, you could stick them like on your coffee table and say you got like, I don't know, one of these Nexus 7s. That was convenient. You bump it on the back and it goes beep beep beep. And it could just connect you to the Wi-Fi automatically. Or it can do much more interesting things like this is not on because I made the mistake of uh, installing some, for, uh, what do you call it, a, a Linux uh, kernel without knowing what I was doing, and I bricked it, so I gotta fix this. Anyway, so usually I go like this, bump, opens up the guitar tuner, all types of things. This one opens up the audio recorder, stuff like that. And this took me a very long time to make. And I had no knowledge of what I was doing. I didn't look up any tutorials about how to do this. I just I had a guitar and I thought, okay, well let me look at look at how this works and um, kind of just make another one. So keep in mind, if you're even if you're what 15 years old, you don't need to know anything. Okay, you can make something that's even better than this, way better. You need to you don't have to know anything. Of course, you learn some things along the way. It's a lot of fun, and of course, being able to say, "Oh, yeah, I built my own uh, guitar. I didn't feel like buying one." It's gonna get you. Oh, I can't say that. It will help you with the women. Wink, wink. I would play it now, but I'm missing a string, and also, I'm better at building them than I am playing them. Uh, also, this light that's above me, it's attached to the ceiling tile. It's right above my head. I don't. If I bump into this part, it's gonna fall on top of me. 
So that should be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, hope the audio is working. That would be a disaster. Now, before we get to work on the new one, I have some things to say. For the most part, just going to be watching me work. I got some things to get off my chest. Now, I want to eat this apple. I like to have something to do with my hands. So, <laughs> how do I say this next thing? Well, now that I'm able to do these YouTube things uh, full time, I never get a, a chance to thank all of the people that have inspired me and helped me throughout my life. So I think I will now, at the beginning of this very extensive and comprehensive and very long, and prob a lot of it's going to be boring as heck, uh, watching someone sand wood live. <laughs> That's how I pitched the idea to people. I was like, you know, when I finally get you know, my account enabled for live streaming, I'm going to be building a guitar live. People will be able to tune in and watch me sand wood live. It's going to be the next big thing. You see people that got declining attention spans. You know, they just want to tune in, you know, tune out, tune into something else. And they, have, they have no attention span. They're turning into zombies. So what do zombies want to do? Nothing. Just gaze at something. Just indefinitely, like the person sanding wood. Okay, now... Let me get down to this. I will be thanking, I want to thank all of the people that have helped me and inspired me throughout my life. But now that I'm able to do this full time, I just want to thank them all. <coughs> okay. Age, age 10. Sheltered in Connecticut. My neighbors that picked on me, because I was small, they called me Tiny Tim. Relentless, Tiny Tim, Tiny Tim, Tiny Tim. Didn't stop for a long time. Age 13, I get into the uh, first day of seventh grade and that's when I develop severe panic disorder as in I get panic attack when anyone talks to me in a social setting. I mean I'm talking severe panic attacks ten times daily basis in school. What would happen would be when this would say a teacher called on me answer a question panic attack someone I didn't know, or someone I did know, ask me something. Panic attack. Get up to sharpen my pencil and burn the place. Panic attack. Have to read a passage out of a book. Panic attack. Have to, uh, give a presentation. With drawing up every day, weeks in advance. And then also the panic attack when it happened. And those panic attacks, they weren't just... Every panic attack is different for people mine were the way they would happen would be, because I have such light skin, all the blood would immediately rush to my face as if I had just finished a 5k in the hot sun. I would look like a lobster. Okay. That would happen in two seconds. And then my heart would start beating so fast if I looked down at my shirt, see my shirt, that, that, bum, 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 bum. It start sweating. I feel like I was dying. And th again, this would happen on a daily basis for a 
until I got to college and started taking medication for it. So, let me continue thanking people. I would like to thank the people, I'm not, I can't actually really name names here, the people that started calling me because of this pink boy. Okay. Pink boy. That went on for about eight years until I left high school. The person that started that would say that her name, you could just call her Mary, because that's her first name. Uh, so I just got picked on, picked on, picked on, picked on, picked on, and I just took it. And I just kept going. Again, these probably over 100,000 panic attacks. Uh, didn't even see a doctor until I was 18. And then, I went to college, and that was terrifying, even more panic attacks, and the people I did get to know, they'd say, first of all, when I first got to college, the first quote-unquote friends I met, I had, were these set of twins, uh, now. They were the ones that, you know, would go out with on the weekend, or weekends, you know. They always ditch me, like I was some type of plague. Make plans, oh yeah, we'll call you, we'll call you, we'll call you. Nope, they never, no. They would, yeah, meet us here, boom, ditch me. And then the people that lived in my floor, they got to know me well. They were, they were, I would say, good people. They knew me. And they would, I would, you know, get in with them and try to get in on their plans because I didn't really have any social connections of my own. And I would really try to say, okay, well, will you guys give me a call when you're going out so I can maybe cut tag along? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, T-Body, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. And they would leave me hanging every single night. Every single night of my freshman year. So, that's when I was still off, not getting medication for these panic attacks. And then the next year, sophomore year, I just about had That's also when I started taking medication for it. Stopped it. Also the most addicting medication there is. Benzodiazepines. So then I made more friends. It was easier to answer questions in class and be myself without panic attacks. So I, I got myself involved with a new circle of friends. We would at first go out on the weekends and have some fun. Legitimate fun. And they wouldn't, even, they wouldn't judge me or ditch me like anyone else. Then they just decided to not associate with me because I was you know, socially awkward. They were completely alone and ditching me, ditching me, making plans and ditching me. I got so furious that junior year, I started to, I was so, you know that point when your blood begins to boil, and you just want to find the first person or thing to just demolish and hurt? Well, so I started punching holes all over the walls in my uh, apartment, a couple of other uh, on campus apartment. I would go to class with my knuckles taped up and all bloody many times. And you know a good way to fix a hole in the wall 
I, th I kind of invented this method. You take some wood glue, mix it with water, uh, about half and half, make sure, uh, soak some paper in there, stir it around, and you just slap the paper onto the wall, let it dry, sand it off, and of course you want to put some pigment into it, of course, to match the correct dye of the wall. And it makes a very strong bond after it dries. It takes a couple of, it takes up to a week actually to dry, but it's very good. Anyway, just punch holes in walls. Just angry. And then, so I want to thank all those people, of course. All of them. I just want to thank them a whole bunch. Everyone at Providence College that I knew that never returned my phone calls. Not even now, I'll call them up, I'll say, hey, maybe you want to catch up sometime? No. They don't return my phone calls. Not even today. Not even some of the people that were my close friends. They want nothing to do with me. just want to thank all of them for being my friends, being there when I needed them. Especially when I started to get depression. Pretty severe depression when you get stuck in bed. That's when they started really just not wanting anything to do with me. But when you have a friend with uh, depression, I guess the best thing to do is just to back away and act like you don't know that person. Leave them just to die, I guess, is the ethical thing to do at a quote-unquote Catholic college, Providence College. All those people I knew, all of them, and when I say all of them, I mean all of them. I want to thank them all. To this day, I think about that and I just want to punch a hole in the wall. Well, today I'll be sanding a piece of wood. How does that sound? <laughs> Let me just finish this up, because it's... The clock has been ticking on this one, hasn't it, YouTube? I'm getting to it, don't worry. Don't worry, I can edit some of this out, so if you're watching live, and you want to see like how to build the guitar, you can kind of tune me out, tune in later, see the edited stuff. But don't worry, it's getting interesting. It's getting very interesting, don't worry. And then... I got so depressed, I started to fail classes. I wasn't liking being an A student. So eventually, 2010, late 2010. Oh, also, yeah, late 2010, I had to take a medical leave to come back home. At that point, I'd already lost my house in Shelton because of the housing bubble that burst. And took my house. That was nice. The only house I ever had, the house I grew up in, my home. So now I'm here in this middle of nowhere, Hickville, uh, population just over 5,000. Probably, last time I checked, I think about 48 black people. Good, a lot of diversity here. This is condo complexes where people uh, come, uh, not when they're quite ready to die, but when they got one foot in the grave, and one foot halfway in the assisted living facilities, and then the other half of the foot, kind of just here. Everyone goes to sleep really early. I don't really play guitar anymore because it's just so, it just kills me. Now, so I get back here, I've been working at the help desk, fixing all the computers. I had a bunch of coworkers. I tried call up my, uh, my boss, you know, because he was my friend that worked there so long, and I'd worked hours, I'll say this much, at Providence College, I worked 
more hours than I was allowed to by the college, sanctioned by my boss at the time. Um, hours that I was not even paid for, that's why I tried to contact my boss. Uh, just, you know what, I worked those, I worked those hours just because I liked fixing computers. And I liked hanging out there. I don't even want, I didn't even want to get paid for them. But I, out of resentment, I did. So, Providence College, college still technically owes me money for hours I worked that I was not allowed to work. Um, so if you're watching from Providence, Providence Help Desk, uh, talk to management because they did some things that were not allowed at all by the college. Maybe some people would even consider those things worthy of, I don't know, if, um, firing someone. Who knows? Who knows? I never even mentioned this. And then to continue this tirade, get back here, go through a period of bad uh, depression. But, you know, I can take it. You, I can take 100,000 panic attacks and sure as hell take your depression. It's nothing. So, then I'm enrolled. <laughs> Wasn't my choice, but you could, I signed the paper. Uh, CCSC, Central Connecticut State University. Instead of going back to Providence, decided to major in network engineering. Because my father told me to. In fact, he ordered me to. He ordered me to sign that paper. I was an adult, I should have made my own decision. He was the same one when I was 17, when I said, you know what, when I get to college, I want to do photography. And he goes, he, he, he yells at me, he goes, Tim, you never picked up picked up a camera in your life. You'll never make one dime taking a picture. There's no way that I'll pay for you to go to college and major in something you're going to not make one dime at. You know, Dad, if you're watching, guess what? You bought me my first camera. I also want to thank my parents for giving me some, for giving me PTSD after I got that. I'm not talking about some type of mild case of, oh, it's all in my head. It's, you know, I think I have it, PT. I'm talking about clinically diagnosed severe PTSD. As in, I got I can't sleep at night. As in, I gotta take a pill to sleep at night. As in, it's the last thing I think about before I close my eyes. First thing I think about before, or when I wake up. I don't even dream, have dreams anymore. All I have are nightmares. And then when something triggers it, I'm throwing up for a week. I want to thank my parents for giving it to me. I want to thank them a whole bunch. You know? I also want to thank Central Connecticut State University first. Lastly, I guess. Because they caused me to take a second medical leave. In late 2011, in fact, this late December 2011, Central Connecticut State University had a quote-unquote information breach. Uh, this is not conspiracy theory stuff. This is actually what happened if you look at newspapers. Uh, information breach. Now, this is like standard stuff happens all the time. Someone hacks into their system, steals all the you know, students, faculty, uh, parents of the, the students, all their credit card personal information. Um, and all of a sudden, everyone's identity is getting stolen, and they don't know why. Now, the normal thing to do when this happens, usually, almost always, I think always when this happens is when there's an information breach like that's that severe, immediately, as soon as the school finds out or the uh, organization finds out, I believe by law they are required to tell the, people, the parties affected. However, Central Connecticut State University waited 
uh, nearly three months to tell anyone. Bit curious, eh? Now, during that time, I mean, I have my own theories, but that would only be speculation about what they were doing, what was happening, why they did that. None of it would reflect well on them, so I'm not even going to mention it, because I don't want to slander the university. I'm just going to state the facts here, because I can still sue them at this point. So I'm pretty sure we can do it. I'm just not right. So, they waited about three months to tell them more. During that time, I, uh, I had my... Well, first, my mother, her identity was stolen. Okay. People were, she lost a whole bunch of money. I kind of laughed at her. I said, you know, Mom, that's what you get for having a password that is basically your name and then your date of birth. <laughs> so I kind of laughed it off. And, and she got her money back. She has a decent bank. Um, so I kind of stopped laughing. When it began to happen to me, um, my money was all going to China. Because I had Bank of America, uh, what would happen would be the first time my identity was stolen, this was in January of 2012, before I knew that my information had been compromised, before I knew that it would be wise to close my bank accounts and get new ones, uh, I a bunch of transactions were made in my name without my... because I wasn't even watching my bank account. What reason would I have to think that I would have to be watching closely? School didn't tell me. I didn't I thought, hey, my information was compromised, you know. I thought maybe a big school like Central Connecticut State University would be ethically required, or perhaps legally and ethically required, to notify the people affected immediately. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> so, <laughs> all the transactions that were made in my name initially in January, well, it was in you know, to a very large, sizable amount of money. And it, every time it happened, before it caught on, the overdraft fees that from Bank of America that accumulated ended up being, geez, I can't, I I, I can't legally give you a number because I intend on filing a lawsuit because right now, as you can see, I'm a bit angry. That's why I'm going to sand away the blues. No, not the blues. I'm not blue. I'm just really angry. So I'm going to sand a piece of wood until that wood is a guitar. And I think that makes enough sense, right? That makes a lot of sense. That makes good sense. So the overdraft fees amounted to way more than the amount the thieves stole. So. Bank of America being nice, you know, courteous, upstanding bank. They were, I was able to get all the stolen money back, but of course the overdraft fees, I didn't get back. <laughs> so Bank of America, they're bigger thieves than the identity thieves. <laughs> and that, people laugh at it. So, anyway, this continued happening. Uh, continued happening, I can't give you a number, but it happened. Many, 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 to the point where I was checking my bank account on a daily basis, and it made me paranoid to the point where I had textbook DSM-4, which is, we all know this big joke, but still DSM-4 style paranoia, followed by DSM-4 style insomnia, because I couldn't sleep. I was thinking, why is this happening to me? Am I being targeted by someone? So at the time, I had just uh, started being successful with YouTube. So I thought, is some because I had, and that was before YouTube would automatically delete the uh, like the hateful comments, the ones that would kind of be like, you know, almost a death threat, <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> now, so I those were up to me to manually delete and maintain all the comments. Um, so, I would see, I have to delete a lot of these nasty comments. Um, also a lot of, I like, I got a lot of big comments, a lot of amusing ones. I like the, I love the comments. That's my favorite part about YouTube, the comments. 
I love the comments. Uh, anyway, so, I thought, you know what? Someone must be out to get me. That's the only explanation. So I'd, be, I'd watch out my window all night long. Before going to class, mind you, driving 40 minutes in an automobile after not sleeping for 48 hours, endangering the lives of, well, of course, myself and many others uh, because of, you know, this chain of events transpired because I did not know why my money was being stolen. CCSU, that's you. That's on you, by the way. That's on you. So then I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep at all. At all. Because I didn't want to sleep. I was paranoid. I was... So, sometimes I go four or five days without sleeping. Driving an automobile. Eight, 80 minutes altogether. Four minutes each way. Okay? On a major road. down to, to a college campus where again you know in a you drive if you drive near a college campus you know that if you're a pedestrian you get to just walk across the street without even looking because you have the right of way all the time even if cars are coming <laughs> it's the best anyway so I could have easily I have no idea it's I'm lucky that I didn't kill anyone I don't know how I didn't kill anyone or get in any type of accident it's amazing when you think about it this went on for maybe eight months now I stole some lasting effects because of that. Jeez, I feel like I'm talking like I'm in a court of law here when I'm actually making a YouTube video about making a guitar. Holy crap. Let me just finish up my little story here. So, this is what happened. After about three months, just about three, ah, I don't know how long it was, it was at least two. It was less than three. Ah. CCS, Central Connecticut State University, what they do is they, uh, they start sending out, uh, gradually, uh, mail to the potential, the parties that may have been affected by this. Okay? Now, wh why would they, what's with the weight? What's with the weight? No one asked any questions. No one. I, I thought that was just so strange. I was in class, me, okay, with all these anxiety disorders and pain disorders. I was the one raising my voice, one, you know, telling you know other people that were affected. Why are you not furious? And asking professors, what happened? What happened? Me, that I've all anyone. Now, piece of paper we all got in the mail. Some many of us got in the mail. What, it said something along the lines of, Oh, it looks like you may have been affected. May have been. What a nice word, huh? Uh, so, we're going to offer you this service because we're, on behalf, because we're such nice people. We're going to go out of our way to help you, the party that has been affected. So, here, look at this. Look at what we're prepared to offer you if you sign this piece of paper. What we're prepared to offer you is two years free of I, this I, identity monitor, monitoring service. Okay? And of course, after that, you had to start, pe your, your account was debited automatically for a fee, and you wouldn't even know it until it hit you. <laughs> now, this service, if you even looked into it, I'm not going to name the company right now, but man, the company, I will say, changed their name very shortly after this happened. And now what, what the company does is they put out recently this quote-unquote objective study conducted exclusively only by them that says something like one in seven babies will have their identity stolen because that's what thieves look for. Thieves always want to steal a baby's identity because it's a clean slate and they gave us all these statistics about, you know, how it's going to happen to your child. It's, ha it's going to happen to your child, and your child will not be able to get into college because your child will not be able to take out a student loan because your child will have been affected by this 20 years ago, so you should buy this service 
now. So they play in your fear. So I wouldn't trust this company at all. Now, keep in mind, a study like that, conducted by the company that benefits from the study, we all know that's highly, the name the word. Now, what got me with that one, again, I'm on a tangent, I do a lot of tangents on these, was where are they getting the data that says that all these children are getting their identities stolen? Where do they get the data? First of all, to get the sample size, they would really only have the data from the parents that call in and say, hey, I want your service because my baby got, you know, their identity stolen and we got these charges on our account. Now, what about the ones that actually had this happen and no one noticed were the ones that were no one was affected? I mean, they just don't have the data to make that kind of claim. It's essentially a lie. So, this company that is making these huge claims that are really tough to believe. I mean, they play on the fear of a, of a parent, okay? Now, that's the easiest thing to play upon to get money, you know? You know, what if your child, blah, 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 what if your child, you know? A mother is like the most vulnerable target next to a baby. <laughs> well, I mean, heck. No, I, I'm able to say that, I believe. I read the YouTube terms of the service. I'm just not allowed to use excessive uh, profanity. Um, which I never really do, except in some of my videos, in which I do. Now, back to my thanking people part, which has been going on for quite some time. In fact, it's, yeah. So, on this piece of paper that we were mailed, that said, oh, wow, cool. you know, we're going to help you out two years, we're going to give you two years of free identity monitoring service. And, of course, this service was provided by this company, and this service would alert you once your identity had been stolen. They would not reimburse you in any way. In fact, if you signed up for this service with this piece of paper, you would be, say you were me, and you were saying bad things about this company, publicly, right here, like me, live, on a YouTube video, the company would be able to sue you. That was in terms of service. Um, additionally, if you sign this little nice piece of paper, on the fine print on the back, and when I say fine print, I don't mean uh, the font size was 8 or 6. I mean, you would need an electron microscope to read that font. And that in itself should be illegal, because what about the people with poor vision that just can't see things that are that small? But that, uh, luckily, I was able to see it. And here's the thing. If you sign that piece of paper, you signed away your right to sue the school for what had happened. Now, these, again, I'm mentioning the facts here, okay? I'm not slandering anyone. I am mentioning the facts. Um, those are facts, factual data. So, of course, everyone that got the piece of paper, they signed it immediately. They wanted to be protected and safe. I, bet I, was, I was probably the only person that didn't sign that piece of paper, and I'm... I still have it in a folder. Um, <laughs> I, the school sees this. They will crap their pants. Because all of what I said was true. Damn, I had a quarter second. Jeez. Thing is, I'm not greedy. I would give it to give it away to. Kids with diseases or something. Because I'm able to do the YouTube full time because of the people I'm continuing to think. So, Central Connecticut State University, the people that were in charge there that when that happened, I want to thank you guys especially for causing me all of that, that 
grief and that and almost killing all of you could have killed people because of that you could have killed people you don't want to put a sleep deprived person behind the wheel for every single day for two semesters okay a paranoid sleep deprived individual oh and then of course to finish the story very quickly I eventually uh, the semester after I ran out of money was unable to afford books was unable to afford gas and failed out and here uh, and so CCSU I'm not done with you yet now my sister the social worker the way that you talk down to me and cite textbooks that you've and studies that you've read because you're certified. You have it. You've got a certified therapy key. And you need all these certifications, okay? Very little experience, mind you, but you've got certification. So you're allowed to talk, talk down to me, yell down to me, but without even having to be a conversation. Yell at me, tell me what to do with my life because, you know, studies show people with this type of anxiety disorder can do this, that, that, that. Well, you know, you're a social worker, Kirsten. You've settled, okay? You know what you've done? You know what you've done with your life? You're going to marry someone because of the money. Just because what's-his-face makes six figures does not mean that he's interesting. I can't say one interesting thing about the man, okay? You're going to end up... You know, <laughs> here's the funny thing. You don't know this right now, but we're all taking bets on this side <laughs> about when in, when you and what's-his-face are going to get engaged. <laughs> it's a big pool. That, of course, doesn't exist because that would be technically gambling, so I was just kidding about that. But, you know, of course, my little brother and I would have never even thought of doing that. And, of course, the whole family would have never even thought of getting in on that. Jeez, that would just be... Whew. Oh, then, of course, I want to thank who else I got here? Jeez, I'm running out of people to think. Oh, I don't, you know, to be honest, I really only have one person to thank without sarcasm or anger. And I know that this person likes to uh, go to great lengths to keep uh, his privacy. So I know that when I say it's you, you know that who I'm talking about. That I'm talking about you. When I say that you, five. When I say five, you know it's you. We're basically like a father to me, problems. And you are the most respectable human being I know. And time that we lived together in Riverside, that those were the best that was the best time of my life ever. And I mean that. You you're just like you're the most inspirational person on it with the most you're the most I can't say enough positive things. I'm sorry that I haven't called you or returned your calls for a year. Just because of this stupid PTSD. It's just like, it has this weird thing that it does to me. And I'm trying to. Like, I see the phone ring, but it just, like, I tried to pick it up. I, I don't know why I can't. But the PTSD, like, the reason why that happened is something I'm not willing to, to talk about uh, publicly. I'm um, like, it's not anything about getting molested or anything. It's, it's more just, or it's all subjective with that. And I don't even want to mention it that much because whenever I talk about it, I almost feel like I'm uh, just doing some type of disservice to all the, the veterans we have that have, you know, the rest of their lives overseas uh, come back with it. Um, I never risk my life for any cause. You know, 
but I just happened to have something happen and then I met the clinical uh, criteria to be diagnosed, that's all. Uh, so that's, anyway. And, and just despite all of that, I'm still here. Oh yeah, also, Kelvin, I'm sorry that like I should stop talking to you, really because that's when I got the PTSD, and that's when I started acting weird and not talking to people. Anyway, let's get on with this. Now, I started working on this video series one year ago. Uh, I have four episodes, uh, four hours long, one hour each episode. Um, I was just sanding the wood, cutting the wood. Now, I stopped because I thought, you know what, I want to do this live, so I had to wait. So, I'm about to pull up right here an unfinished a uh, block of wood that we're going to start sanding. And I said we're going to start with a block of wood. Um, now, this is uh, the way these episodes will air. will be a little bit uh, disjointed. Um, after I finish up tonight, what uh, I'll be doing is going back to my hard drives, getting the previous footage, and setting uh, those to uh, with live air dates so that I can air them, the clips, quote-unquote, live, while answering uh, questions about them. Um, but if you look at my YouTube uh, videos, if you just, like, uh, I got a lot, and they're not organized. I think if you just search on YouTube, Tim A242, uh, guitar, or I don't know, you'll see I have one little video uh, compilation of me, of the four hours, four-hour time-lapse from the block of wood, uh, to this, um, and that's, it's like two minutes long, oh, I'll play it on my phone, oh, keep in mind, despite that, uh, this being an iPhone, um, I only have this still, because it's the iPhone 4S, that's the last one that Steve Jobs had a hand, uh, in whatever he does, did with Apple. Before he got greedy and decided to just leave the company, move on to bigger and better things. I don't know what he's working on now. I think he's working on the iCloud or something. Which, by the way, Steve Jobs only has five gigabytes of space. So anyway, uh, and by the way, I've dropped this. I've gotten mad. I've thrown this at concrete things. Steve Jobs, why won't? Th anyway, it won't break. Um, it's a very well designed piece of hardware, so I was hoping it'd break a lot of times, including the time when I deliberately submerged it in a bathtub, <laughs> and it just doesn't break. Uh, eventually, well, I think, uh, or at least I'll be due for an upgrade soon, so I'm going to definitely switch to something that is not Apple, because I gotta say, Steve, uh, Tim Cook, the guy is running the company into the around. Now, I I hate social networks. Uh, I use the Google Plus because that's more of like an, for people that have something to contribute to the internet. Uh, Twitter I use when I have an, I used to use it more just when I have an amusing thought or I really just did mostly I would troll people non-stop. Uh, but anyway, I put some tweets out there. If My name on Twitter is Ringo Star Power. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I if you look up Google or I don't know how you find it, you'll see like a year ago when Apple stock was way up there. Like I think it was at the same price or above Google stock. I would I said you know 
Apple stock is like a toxic investment. Get out, it's going to tank. And I was totally right about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, Steve, uh, Tim Cook, running the company into the ground. Uh, his new policy is uh, litigation, uh, not innovation. <laughs> now, <laughs> I remember one time they asked him about the uh, those uh, near field communication NFC chips they have in all the Android devices. They've had them since 2009. He said something like, well, we prefer to see how, you know, the technology trends move first and then, you know, kind of follow that. And what the heck, man? Come on, you're Apple. You're supposed to... I mean, the, the iPod was like the most innovative thing ever. Like, when I saw that, I was like, what? You gotta be kidding me, Steve Jobs. There is no way that you can fit a CD. You can't fit a CD into something that's this big. It just won't fit. I don't care if you're the CEO of this company. You can't fit a CD into something that's this big. Let alone your entire CD collection. What have you been smoking, Steve Jobs? What the heck have you been smoking? And why are these people believing it? Have you just, like, drugged them all? Like, what the heck, man? But, lo and behold, he was able to fit an entire CD into an iPod, and even more CDs, and more and more and more, and it was innovation, and the iPhone, innovation. And then, kind of tapered off, uh, <laughs> the iPhone 5, but that was a joke. <laughs> they just, they're... <laughs> And then the iPads, it's like you're trying to compete with, you know, like, these other people that are trying, they're out to get your market sugar, like the, uh, like all these other, all, everyone is out to get Apple's market sugar, and they're getting it, they're taking it away. Because <laughs> I can, I can see a lot of this, because I look at all the YouTube analytical data, I can see what devices people are watching things on, my stuff on. And by the way, I, I'm a big advocate of, uh, like, having privacy. And like, I hate watching ads. I would say download Adblock, because I hate ads. Get Adblock. Honestly, Ad, Adblock's have all types of ads. Because I have some ads in my videos. I hate ads. I'm such a hypocrite. How do I live with myself? What you do is you have to convince yourself that you're okay with being a hypocrite. Because if you're a hypocrite, you're okay with being a hypocrite. By definition, I think. It's quite a quandary. Anyway, back to my rant. Which is going on for quite, it's been a one hour rant. I'm good at this. I should just change this series from how to build an electric guitar to, you know, maybe I'll just keep it how to build an electric guitar, but everyone will know that I'm just not ever going to build it. <laughs> no, I'm going to. I'm going to, I promise. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's a very well designed piece of hardware. <laughs> but the, the iPad, like what a joke that is! It's, it's such a wild design. I handled one once, and I was like, "Wow, you know, here, here, I don't want to hold it. You take it back, please. I don't. If I drop this, I am dead. But I bet if I did drop it, it would be fine. But it just feels like a, feels so heavy and well made. And I don't want to have a heavy, well made piece of hardware. I want to have one of these." One of these, the Nexus 7. Oh, man. Google, can you pay me to say that? Please? Paid, that would be a paid product to place me. Because when I set up these live streams, I know there's an option. This video includes a paid product placement. I've never been able to click that, you know? Because no one is willing to pay me to promote their product. Hey, look, watch this. You know... As a man in my 50s, sometimes I have a tough time getting it up. Ever since starting Viagra, I've got wood. See? Look, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. What else do I have here? How about this? Water. Don't drink it because it comes out of the sink and we can't make money off it. Buy Coke. Or, anyway, yeah, that's the, the Nexus thing. 
this thing is like, oh my. What I do is, when I would show this to new pe to people that I'd never seen it before, when it first came out and I bought it last year, I think I actually got it in the winter. I would say, you have to see this thing. It's so fast. It's got a quad-core processor with five cores. <sighs> and I'd be like, watch this, watch this, watch this. It doesn't break. I tested it. It doesn't break. And I would take it, and I'd be like, watch this. And like, I'm going to throw it. And they'd be like, what? You know, 10, don't, you know, that's just, you're, dude, that you're going to break that. And, then I'm like, and I'm like, you know what? If I do break it, it's going to be worth it. But first of all, it's not going to break. So I would take it. And I would, with all my force, I would throw it, just with any which direction in which it would land, and you know, not like in a tree or something, like my remote controls helicopter. Oh yeah, Chris Tola, my, uh, I know that your neighbor found my helicopter, because it lands on the roof or something. I have the remote for it. I know you have my little helicopter. We'll have to meet up so I can get it back. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I just throw it up and just lands anywhere, it bounces off the pavement, whatever, it lands, it just doesn't break. And I, it's not like I even wanted it to break, like I want this to break, because this, there, it's not like I would be able to get like the new Nexus 7 back then. Now there's a new one. Uh, but, and I was like, yeah, look, it does that. It could, it could sustain that kind of fall in the snow, you know? Additionally, the thing was $200. Yeah, and I use PayPal, you know, pay, uh, what's it called, PayPal, uh, uh, bill me later. So, I, I'm not even gonna pay for it. It was free. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure that's how a credit card works. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, and this thing, oh man, you can play Grand Theft Auto on this, you be being up hookers on the go, and all of a sudden switch to, like, taking notes in class. Back when I was able to go to class, CCSU, I'm looking at you. I am looking at you. My hands are really shaking because of you. You know, what I'm about to say, I want to just first of all say that uh, part my dad, uh, his step, not his new wife, is, uh, her, is a, uh, her faith is, uh, Judaism, uh, so, and she's, uh, she's one of my favorite people, so, what I'm about to say, it's not anti-Semitic, it's not, please, don't take it that way, but CCSU, you, please, you better lawyer her up, because recently, I just got a Jewish lawyer, that's all I'm willing to say. I found a website where I can look for it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. How much time do I have left here? Because honestly, I couldn't. I didn't have time because I was setting up the encoder, uh, and I got some issues with that because. Basically, what it came down to was usually when you want to set up like a live thing, it's essentially, I mean, the way that things are going, you buy a new TV, you know how it is? It's a smart TV. You can, you know, with the remote, you can navigate to a YouTube live stream. You know, eventually, as I make more and more and more and more of these live things, it, statistically, there will be some people watching, sitting back on a couch, watching on a TV. So, if you want to make, you could, to those people, it would be technically, they'd be watching a TV show. If you want to make a TV show, you got to, you know, kind of plan ahead. Uh, you know, set up the cameras and the broadcasting system and your outfit. Kind of like ahead of time, for my understanding of things. But Conan, he makes it look so easy. He doesn't even need a writer. He... All of his writers can just quit, and he'd be just as funny. But the thing with him is, a lot of his jokes really—they only work with him. Like I can't, I can't try to steal any of his jokes because a lot of them, even though they're they're just really hilarious by themselves, 
they're only funny within the context of a tall, giant Irish man saying them, which is like the brilliant thing about it. It's like copyright protection on his jokes somehow. It's amazing. Yeah. He's so funny. I don't watch his show though. You know why? I don't watch TV. In fact, I don't even watch YouTube videos. I don't really watch any of my own YouTube videos. Sometimes when I'm showing them to people, I will. You gotta, you know, I gotta build up my viewer base. So I'll show them to people. Come on, give me a break. But so I have to watch them too. And I'll be like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna go get a coffee. You can finish watching it. But TV, man. In 2009, I stopped watching TV. I basically, uh, I had the remote in my hand, and a reality TV program came on. I was 19 years old. I said, expletive, expletive. I have had enough of expletive this. I took the remote. The window was actually open. The screen was up. It was the summer. I was second floor. <laughs> the out of the window. <laughs> I was living with my mom at 19, so she was mad, but we got it back, and I just never watched TV since then. I never went and turned on a TV to watch it, I'm, you know, I never did that since then. You know, if someone else is watching TV and I walk by, I'll stand up, I'll, I'll never sit down with them and watch, I'll stand up like this. And I'll watch, and I'll, you know, it's easy though, because TV, you can tell, it's gotten so stupid in the past, it's gone downhill. You can predict what's going to happen pretty easily, without even having any type of special talent. You could just be someone of, of normal intelligence, but who, is, who has distanced themselves from these TV things, and go in and watch one, see one of these TV programs, take a look, and say, Boom. She's going to have a baby. The baby is going to have telekinetic uh, abilities, but also be a vampire. Uh, it's easy. You can tell by the way that the father looked at her. Uh, they Neither of them know it yet, but it's going to happen. The writers want it to happen. But you better watch out because the mailman might have a gun. You know, it's just... It's, it's, these are simple things that happen all the time in TV. It's just... And then, of course... Oh, sh that's my clock upstairs that goes... Dun, 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 when it's midnight, this thing ends at 12.15. You know, what I was going to say was... My lack of preparation led me to not... Oh, I have time to go and grab the uh, dust, ma dust mask. Which would be essential because I would be taking steel wool to this to, t to pull out this 154 old finish on this uh, which I assume would be I don't know, toxic a little bit some type of toxic or at least not pleasant wouldn't be good I wouldn't like it um, I would also have to go Oh, oh, I forgot. The light is haunted. It'll come back on eventually. Watch this. I'm not even gonna, I'm watch. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. It'll come back on. I swear, the light will come back on. Wait, is my computer in sleep mode? Please tell me my computer didn't go to sleep. Usually, I disable. <sighs> Doesn't help having a haunted house. Well, it's not a haunted house, it's a haunted light. No, it's not a haunted light, it's just the, uh, the little switch there. It's, a uh, jittery. Anyway, so... I think I just... I just wanted to talk a lot on the first episode. That's all I wanted to do, I think. I, I don't think consciously I knew, but I think deep down I wanted to. Uh, also, it's good just to see... I'll be able to... This is a good experience because my, actually my first live stream is more of a test for our cast. I did just this, <laughs> the long rant, but it was okay because it was just my test for our cast. I was doing anything, whatever, uh, and 
it turned out, as soon as I began, I was getting the audio loop back, the feedback, because I had the mic playing back. And I was like, ah, oh, feedback, and I disabled the wrong thing. So then the whole 45 minute broadcast that was supposed to last, last one half hour ended up being, uh, it would have worked better if I was in mine. Let's put it that way. No audio. And it, I had some, some pretty good zingers in there. I, I had the green screen up and I was, no, it's not funny if I said, I had some good, good ones in there. Okay. <laughs> but it's not a loss because I'm not that funny to begin with. Maybe I am. I don't know. Who cares? Not me. Uh, oh, I want to show you the how to build an elect. It's a YouTube video I made. I want to show it to you. It's the first four hours of this. I'm going to Google it, see if it comes up. How to build. Here, wait. I'm just typing in how to build. I'm going to see what the suggestions come up with. How to build, okay, the, number one is how to build a deck, and how to build a fire pit, how to build a shed, how to build a retaining wall, how to build credit, how to build a treehouse, how to build a computer, how to build a patio, how to build muscle. That's not funny. How about this? Oh, this is going to be funny. Can you get high off of I'll, I'll read you some funny ones because I really shouldn't have to be saying this um, uh, I'm not going to read any illicit ones Advil um, I know for a fact that will kill you Naproxen kill you Sharpie, don't do it, bad idea don't do any of this by the way this is all, again, I'm just googling can you get high off of where you'll see the most frequent uh, search uh, terms people enter. And again, these are just people that, basically teenagers, that just want to get some type of stupid people. But not, no, no such thing as stupid people. Just No one is stupid. People are just different. I'll, I just want to find you some funny ones. Ibuprofen. Nail polish. Nothing was very funny here. But all of those, I would say, I just just to be safe, I'm going to exaggerate. Well, not exaggerate. I just want to say, if you do any of those, you'll die immediately. Disclaimer. Uh, uh, how about this one? Generic one. Can you? Can you? Space. What the heck? Can you escape level 7? Can you escape level 6? Can you escape level 5? Okay. How about this? Uh, why is my why is my why is my pool cloudy? Why is my internet so slow? Why is my computer so slow? Why number four? Why is my poop green? Number five? Why is my eye twitching? Number six? Why is my period late? Number seven? Why is my pool green? Number eight? Why is my son crying? Number nine, why is my dog eating grass? Number ten, why is my hair falling out? Ooh. How about this one? How to get free... How to get free space... Okay, first one, Microsoft points. How to get free music. How to get free... How to get free money. How to get free Xbox Live, how to get free internet, how to get free Wi-Fi. Ooh, 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 I know how to do that one. I know how to do that. I know exactly how to do that. I've made videos about how to exploit your quote-unquote own network vulnerabilities. To, but still, it's... I gotta say, in the past, when I was like a teenager, and you had to do stuff like that, maybe I was tempted to do that. But then I eventually came to the realization that, you know, hell, what if, you know, I'm paying for my internet here, which by the way is I'm going to end my rant with my internet speed. I'm paying for my internet. What if all of a sudden I was doing this YouTube live stream, okay, and it just locked up and stopped uploading because 
all because someone had access to my internet. Okay, and they were using it without my permission. I'd be furious. Well, not furious. I have learned not to get angry. Because one time, I ate this mushroom, and I was like one with the universe. And it's a very positive experience. Um, and it was a lot of fun. It was. A, I came away from the experience with, like after I was watching the water flow back upstream, sitting on that rock in the river. I realized that anger is like a hot coal. And you don't want to hold on to a hot coal. You know why? Because it's really hot. So instead you take the hot coal and you throw it at someone and hit him in the face with it. It's way more satisfying. Anyway, so yeah, you don't want to steal someone's Wi-Fi. Even if you have the technical knowledge how to if you even if you know how to get how to not get caught, it just come on. What if you're the other person? Just don't do it. Uh, okay. I'm going to show you the video. So it is how to build an electric guitar. Oh, the number one uh, search result on Google is from instructables.com. Ooh, ooh! I'm gonna. I want to read this one so I can see how I can make, put it to shame. Cause so far, I'm definitely not on course to do that. Oh, you know what I hate nowadays? Say you got a mobile device. Every single web page you click on, every single web page. You know what it'll say? Oh, but wait! I'll stop here. Why not download our free mobile app? You know what? Expletive, expletive, expletive yourself. Seriously, expletive. I can't emphasize. Ex expletive to the scientific notation. Come on. Look at this. Instructables.com. It doesn't even ask you. It says, get the app, exclamation point. But then it, on the bottom it says, download for your app. Okay, if you're going to tell me twice to do it, I'm going to make a point to call you out on it. To the probably, I'm, I can't see how many people are watching because if I was watching myself, I would be making an infinite loop, which actually wouldn't cause any type of uh, uh, issue with the broadcast. It would just confuse me. Uh, so, probably two people watching. Jeez, oh, you, you people, you got a lot of nerve. You got a lot of nerve. While I acknowledge there are many instructables on building, modding, and hacking guitars of all sorts, it is my intention to demonstrate how you, you too, can achieve professional-like... Okay, first of all, professional-like results. Professional-like should have a, should be hyphenated. When, when building your... It should be while building your own instruments. I am also... You could have used a semicolon to connect those two independent clauses you... I am also going to take you through the more daunting task of building the guitar neck from scratch, comma, something, of, okay, that's not a, not a comma, anyway, something many builders avoid by repurposing, finally you use a hyphen, old, or, but, okay, okay, let me read that again, something many builders avoid by repurposing old or using, quote, store-bought, end quote, Next, that's not a sentence. And this is the number one search result. But then again, maybe it's a they do a good job. And let's face it, comma, if you play guitar, then you know the neck can make or break an instrument. Well, you know what? So can the pickups. If you don't have pickups, then I'll uh, try plugging them in. Uh, blah blah blah. I hope some of you will find some inspiration from this instructable and try building your own electric guitar. Also, comma, if you would be so kind as to vote for this instructable in the, why is that capitalized? Epilogue, also misspelled, challenge. And the epilogue challenge? Jeez, this is, okay. Okay. So I see what, 
what I'm seeing here on this Instructables version of how to build an electric guitar, it's eight pages. Okay, it looks like first they're building some type of paper template, which is nice. Uh, using a jigsaw, that's nice. Looks like they have a nice little picture there. Oh, it also looks like they have some type... Oh, this person has access to a professional workshop. You know, the first one I built, I almost did it completely, completely with sandpaper, okay? In my basement, my other basement. The one that got stolen by the bank. Uh, it's not like I have any resentment towards banks, but still. Yeah, just take your expensive, uh, you know... I don't even know the names of those tools, and do that, it'll just take you one, yeah. The thing that these instructable people need to get through their thick heads is that not many, almost, the people that they're reviewing this don't have access to all these tools, okay? You know, let me, I want to get back to my thing. I'm sure that, now, here's the thing, okay? I'm, I'm trying to keep this simple, and I want to, I'm, I'm going to get you that, Amazing result that I have on the that I just threw in the back of the couch. This. Oh no, my green screen. Oh no. Well, it was actually just a cheap tablecloth. It was three for a dollar. It was practically a steal. Anyway, <laughs> the, the reason why I popped it up there was because I had this copyrighted poster behind there. Uh, and I figured, you know, it's for, I'm, not, I'm probably going to knock it down, so let me just also move the poster just in case. So anyway, to go from this, which by the way, you I will put the footage up where you see me turn a piece of wood that I took by chopping up a desk. It's a square piece of wood. And when I say square, I actually mean a rectangle. But can someone in the comments please check, double check for me? Is a rectangle a type of square? Where is a square type of rectangle? I know that a ellipse... No, I know that a circle is a type of ellipse. That has nothing to do with anything. Now... So, you're going to see, okay, this was more of just like the preliminary, let's see if Tim AT42 can manage to, uh, I don't know, not accidentally unplug something and keep his camera running and the stream going for this long, you know. But that was more of what this was, uh, still, this is, I guess, episode one. But I will be uploading every, because I do have everything with, you know, starting off with the jigsaw with to the block of wood. Now, okay, I got four minutes left, so this is going to be a bit, it's going to throw you for a loop a bit with the time period that we're going to be working with and how I'm going to be uploading the videos. So, the next video that you will see in this series will be me one year in the past. I'm going to get into my time machine and start building this in the past. With, serving with the block of wood. And in four hours, I will turn the block of wood into this. i got to put this thing down because I want to gesticulate this thing better. Okay. So in four hours, I will turn the block of wood. Do I have more? Oh, I have, i got wood. Okay, I just broke a glass. I don't know why you didn't why that didn't even make a noise. Okay. So in four hours, I go from that this to this. Now, I use one tool and that is a jigsaw. And uh, when I built the first one, I used a uh, a hand a uh, handsaw. And that's something that will cost like a couple bucks at your local hardware store handsaw. Um, if you have a jigsaw, or any type of saw, bandsaw, anything to cut a piece of wood into the rough shape of this, that's fine. 
if you have the cheapest possible hand saw they manufacture, that's fine too. Okay? Keep in mind, we're I'm trying to minimize the use of, you know, expensive tools here, okay? Because unlike that instructables nut job, which by the way, I'm not envious of this at all. Or I'm not lying about it also. By the way, that's the number one Google search result for how to build an electric guitar. It's like, oh yeah, everyone has access to this, you know, workshop with all of the tools that exist. Yeah, right. No. I'm going to show you how to build this with basically just sandpaper. And like, you just have to cut the sh basic shape out. That's all. <laughs> and then the other three hours, I am sanding it. I'm just sitting in a chair. Sanding it, sanding it, sanding it, sanding it, sanding, sanding, sanding. Most people will take a power sander to it. Probably what that person in the instructable thing does. Because the power sander is just more convenient. See that? This little stain on here? That's my sweat. Okay. Which might be an issue because I've got to get that off somehow. So. Let's see, what materials will you be needing? I mean, it's it's honestly not that hard. And when, I, when I'm about to say, okay, I'm going to end it with this. And keep in mind, no, I want to end it with something else, okay? Uh, I know that first uh, broadcast, it was a bit, every, I was all over the place. The other ones will be very straightforward. I'll keep it to the wood. Now, I want to just mention, I want to say that, I mean, this uh, broadcast was brought to you by, again, this is not a paid product pl placement. If anything, it's the opposite. It's brought to you by uh, my AT&T uh, U-verse internet service, which, by the way, they're practically robbing me. I pay for 19,192 kilobits a second downstream. You know what they give me? You know what they give me? They give me exactly, exactly one-eighth of that. They cap me at one-eighth of that. You know why? Because they messed up their binary. That's why. So AT&T, I want to say you provide a substandard, sub, of extremely substandard service, and you advertise it as something else. Okay? Those are the facts. So I would say if you're watching and you're shopping for new internet, and you see AT&T as an option, Based on what I've seen, again, sample size one, don't go with AT&T, because they have deceived me. Because it almost seems like either they think I don't know the difference between a bit and a byte, or maybe they don't know the difference. Either way, it's either they're lying or they're incompetent. Or maybe both. I wouldn't be surprised, but don't go with AT&T, please. Ta da Anyway, soon, we'll be uh, playing this. Wait, is that how it goes? It's a lot of fun. And keep in mind, I'll, I'm going to sustain at least one power tool wound doing this. I mean, I got scars all up and down me. So, one time I got this one scar building the first one, where it was so bad, it's like, okay, I'm going to have to go to the hospital, or I'm going to have to treat it like it's the Old West. So I got a screwdriver, got a blowtorch, I, I got this, the flathead so hot with the blowtorch, it was blowing. And it was right here on my guitar playing hand. So I thought, well, I gotta fix this. And I don't want to go to the hospital. So, <laughs> sizzle. And I gotta say, you know, it wasn't that bad. You know, you just have like six or ten beers first. You're good. And then uh, what I did next was I, you know, just dumped all the possible disinfectants on it. And then here's the key part to make that heal, okay? Aloe. Rubbing alcohol. And here's the most important thing of all. You want to have, you want to take a vitamin E vitamin capsule, snap it open so you get like the jelly substance, the sticky substance. Rub it all on the open wound that won't close, and kind of stick it together. Then wrap it up with tape, so it's like the, the wound is 
the skin is held together, and the vitamin E is like is uh kind of holding it there. And you wait overnight. Next day, reapply everything. And then within three days after sustaining that horrific wound, my friend posted a bunch of pictures on Facebook of it. I thought it was awesome. Everyone else thought it was. I hate Facebook, by the way. I'm going to make an upcoming video about how to, the one way in which you can bring it down. People say, oh, I can't delete my account. What do I do? I say, don't delete it. I say, Facebook has one weakness. It's their greed. They feed off your data. Last quarter, they posted their, uh, uh, their profits, the second quarter profits, stock went up to nearly their IPO price. You know why? You know how they made all that money? By taking everyone's personal information and posting, I'm sorry, and taking all the information and placing highly targeted advertisements all over the place. All over. All the money they made was ad revenue. It didn't show any type of, the company shows no signs of growth. Nothing. Just ad revenue because of that. Now, people are going to get tired of that. People are leaving Facebook. But Facebook says, nah, -uh. okay, you can leave, fine, we're going to hold on to your data, you know, whatever. Now, that, fine, okay, Facebook, you can do that, but there's another way. People think they're powerless. They, they think that Facebook can just take their data and that all they can do is react to that instead of, uh, all they can do is just hide and, you know, run away and hide and, like, hope that Facebook doesn't do anything with it, but they try to close their account in some way. No, I say leave it open. I say expand upon your information. I say update it and change it. But with what, Tim A242? Well, Facebook makes all their money off of selling their infer people's information, including information that you want to get rid of. You try to close your account, you can't, but Facebook says, well, keep your data, we're going to leave your account open, screw you. What you do is, no one has thought of this yet, I'm going to be making a website that will do automatically for you, because Facebook needs to burn, and I say that in the sense of, uh, it needs to, the, the site uh, traffic, uh, the monthly site traffic needs to see a drastic uh, decrease when I say that. Uh, what you do is, say I'm Tim A242, and I have posted all my personal information on Facebook, uh, and I want out. Facebook feeds off that info, it needs that information to sell, to, to pump out those ads, to sell, to post those big record numbers, to keep its share price high. Now what if all of a sudden, the information it was selling to their advertisers became absolutely worthless? What if they couldn't place targeted advertisements anymore because the information the advertisers were buying was not of an actual person? but fabricated, intentionally misleading information. Let's just say, to me, to me, to Borti, who lives in, you know, this town, blah, 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 all of a sudden updates his uh, profile, and speak fluent Mandarin. Uh, all of a sudden, I've got a new job overseas. I like all uh, n uh, very niche Swedish films now. All of my books, I I'm really into it. 18th century French uh, literature. Uh, the last five times I logged into Facebook, my IP address came from, let's just say, Cuba. Because again, you could use a, a proxy service that, because again, Facebook, they will monitor where your IP address is that you log in from. Uh, and then this is the key thing. Facebook, they will, they also sell your facial recognition data. They take all the photos of your face, build a biometric 3D model, and if you've seen my Nordia report, you know what I'm talking about. I sound like some type of, like, conspiracy theory nut job. Oh, man. But, like, okay, fine. You don't believe me? Google 
on face Google something about download a copy of my Facebook information, please. And then go and do that and look at the file. You will see a, a tab for facial recognition data. Facebook collects that and it sells it. So how do you get out of that? Well, here's here's a simple solution. I'm all over the place, I know. Let's just say I uh I can do this. I can take a photo of my face and then have it on my desktop, then have Google Image Search over here, drag and drop the picture of my face into Google Image Search, and chances are it will find a photo of someone who looks kind of like me. Post that, tag it as myself on Facebook, tag the person as me on Facebook. Get a bunch of photos of that person, tag that person as me. And then I take that person, drag their face into Google Image Search, find people that look like them, post a bunch of pictures of them on Facebook as me, take that person, drag their face into Google and search, find people that look like them, and all of a sudden you have this very subtle change in looks over time. And of course I changed the angle, I kind of like distorted the photo so you couldn't quite see and make out the fact that it was not me change the IP addresses, change all the information that is useful to an advertiser on Facebook, and have that done all automatically on this website I'm going to hopefully work on. And if you, if you can help me with this, because I have very little experience with making websites, although I do own about 100, go to howthecloudworks.com. That's funny. <laughs> oh, man, I'm out of it. That was fun. I had a good time. We didn't get much done. We did not get much done. I gotta say. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, it's it's a work in progress. I, I think that's what, more or less, that's what it is. But we're gonna get, we're gonna get to the end. I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through it, okay? And trust me, if you don't think that you can build one of, build an Eleanor, that's her name, Eleanor, back there, then you're mistaken. Because you can. You need barely any tools. Okay, because I'm going to be using as few tools as I can. Uh, and because I have the option of making a nice little time lapse of me trying to make a little dimple on something for eight hours, a piece of sandpaper, I have that luxury. Then you'll see that someone can do it without having those expensive tools so people and say you Google how to build an electric guitar that those people have access to. There are nice workshops, because those people that, you know, they build them professionally as a job and they sell them. Me? I do lots of things. I got lots of hobbies. Come on. I got lots of hobbies. I, uh, I do lots of things. This is just one of my... I mean, you've seen my... I got my videos are all over the place. This is not the only thing I do. It's just one thing I know how to do. It's not like, look, I'm in a basement here. I, I painted the floor like this because it's like a workshop floor for when I do this, but that's as far, that's about as much of a workshop as it is a uh, workshop. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. Now, uh, if you like this, I'm not going to tell you to subscribe to me because that's what YouTube wants. They want you to say, oh, this is why you should subscribe to me, blah, 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 make, make it all a nice little package, you know? You know, make the same type of videos. Oh, I make technology videos, I review hardware, blah, I do this, I do that, subscribe to me. No, I do lots of videos, can't sum it up that quickly. If you want to subscribe to me, that's your choice, but if you do, keep in mind, any video I spew out will pop into your stream. Perhaps it's better if you just bookmark me, come back when you feel like it. Or if you feel like subscribing to help, maybe think again, because the, the best way to help me, number one way that I would appreciate would be name your Wi-Fi network, youtube.com slash Tim8242. Just for an hour, then just switch it back. That's all. That would just, that's the only thing that would, I think would be awesome if you wanted to do that. Subscribing, hey, whatever. I mean, you see how many I got like a million and something views. I I only have like seven hundred subscribers. Most people they'll have like 
crap load of subscribers and, and that many views. Thing is, I don't. I mean, there's lots of stuff to. Who cares about subscribing? I mean, come on. Everyone says, oh, subscribe. You look at people's videos, there's always something at the bottom. Subscribe. They don't say why. They don't say, oh, well, if you subscribe, uh, you know, you'll get these benefits. No, they just tell you to. They don't ask you. If they just ask politely, maybe I do. If someone, you know, next time someone tells you to do something, say no. You, if they ask you politely, consider it. Until next time. I hope that, I hope my microphone was on. That would be bad, because I think that was quite the tirade. I hope tirade was the right word. I, I hit stop, I don't know what that did. I meant to, I meant to end the whole thing. I think I'm supposed to, to end it, I ended on YouTube, not on this end on the encoding end. So, yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and do it the opposite way next time. Ugh. So, yeah, right now I'm watching myself live. Um, what I'm trying to do is, is end the show in some way. I would like to end the show because I feel like playing some Battlefield because I got, yeah, I'm not very good, I just kind of like to run around and do things. Oh wait, that's me! Hey, I'm on TV! That's me! Okay, now I want to... If I want to end the broadcast, I want to find out how to do that, because right now I'm watching the... I have two things up, the YouTube thing, and there's this Adobe Flash Media Live Encoder. And it, it's doing some fancy things. I see some fancy command line stuff going on here. And then some fancy stuff. And, and then uh, I see myself three times and then one time. Is this what the fifth dimension is? What the heck? So if I want to stop the broadcast, I stopped it the first time. And it said, YouTube said, oh, we're experiencing technical difficulties. And I just want to say I'm done. Because I'm thirsty, you know, I, I was talking a lot. I was talking a lot. I, I really got to use the men's room. You know, I was sitting there for a while. I need a break. I want to go outside. I want to see this moonlight, if there is any. Am I still on? I can't even tell. Let me go into the settings. Oh, that's it. What I do is, I think, uh, wait a second. Wait a second. That can't be. Wait. Wait, that's me. Okay. So what I do is I think I click. Wait, that just makes sense to click stop streaming. I don't know what. Okay, I see. Oh, I see some comments. James Young, I'm sorry. Where's my keyboard, if you're still here? Oh, oh wait, keyboard. Oh, wow. I put my keyboard right on top of Eleanor. Oh, it looks like I put in some type of delay. I set the thing to go for uh, 90 minutes, so 1 hour and 45 minutes is not 90 minutes. I'm no, I'm no calculator, but it looks like I can go, go longer if I feel like it.
which is kind of cool. Okay, James Young says, didn't that hurt? It looks like you were referring to uh, when I was, I told the story about taking the blowtorch to fix my power tool wound. Now, what happened was, I'll tell it again just quickly, uh, I had a flathead screwdriver and a blowtorch after sustaining a very severe uh, uh, laceration right here. Ah! When I was working on uh, Eleanor, that electric guitar in the background, it was either go to the hospital or fix it yourself. And I was like, hey, I'm working on something that's kind of do-it-yourself oriented. Why don't I just take my hand out of, you know, soaking it in this bucket of blood and go do something that's also do-it-yourself? I think I saw this on a TV show once. So I, I, I think it, it's pronounced cauterize, quarterize. It's when you take something really hot and put it on the wound to, it's either to disinfect it or to prevent gangrene or to do something, but it just seemed like a good idea. I had lost a bit of blood. I would show the pictures if I had uh, it set up right now so I'd be able to pull up the screen share. Uh, also, I'm not sure if that would be against YouTube guidelines. Yeah, I'm trying to keep keep my uh, my little show here. I don't know if showing like all these explicit bloody pictures would be against that. I mean, I, I, I ain't no square, but you gotta do the song, YouTube song and dance to stay on YouTube. But anyway, yeah. So I just, it was, the last version was so deep that I was losing blood at such an alarming rate. Then one of my friends that was, he was the one taking the photos of it. He goes, you know, maybe we should not just go to the hospital. Maybe we need to call an ambulance. And that's when I thought, you know, let me, give me your 40. I'm gonna, let me, let me chug that. I'm gonna finish that. I'm gonna do give me the blood. Yeah, I'm gonna take the blood torch. I'm gonna take give me the, I'm gonna take a flathead. I need some duct tape. I'm gonna take some duct tape too. I'm gonna fix it. He goes, you know, you're just gonna lose your finger. And I go, yeah, I'm gonna lose my fingers between two different fingers. And he's like, well, oh, man. So I went to the bathroom and just this big laceration that went all the way down to the point where you can see. You're able to see each layer of skin that it had, I had uh, penetrated through. And I counted them all, and you're able to see, I, I don't know whether it were ligaments, tendons, I went through those. It was it was a pretty horrible sight. Now, most people would be scared by that. I don't know, maybe there's something wrong with me. I was more thinking, oh, how can I fix this? And, because uh, this is my guitar playing hand, I needed that fixed. So... You know, I took the flathead screwdriver, hit it with the blowtorch till it was red hot, and just jammed it in. It went sizzle, 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 sizzle. Because I was so drunk, I guess that, that's probably why I got the power of 12 wounds, because I was so drunk. It also didn't really hurt, but I guess I I still did do it correctly. Then I disinfected it, disinfected it. And the vitamin E that I used, I think, was key to getting it to heal. And the, the darn thing healed in three days. I, when I took off the bandages, the skin had completely healed on top. It healed so fast that the tendons and the ligaments and the, all the layers of fatty tissue beneath it had not yet healed. Yeah, the skin on top had. So I was like, whoa, I'm all healed. Jesus, it's a miracle. And I was like, oh, wait, I'm sore underneath. So, long story short, if you get hurt like that, just... I don't know. C consult a medical dictionary? I think. I mean, uh. I think that's the best. It, oh, yeah, James, to answer your question. Even though, yes, I did consume some alcohol to, con to kind of kill the pain. It, it's probably the most pain you could experience without passing out. But. The thing is, it's, um. It's only like it's only physical pain, and it's it's quick and it's it's and after that you take after I took off took out that red hot uh, flathead out of my skin, 
then I had, I guess I had killed like all the nerves and I had stopped all the bleeding. So this, I can't feel anything over here. So, I mean, it burned like hell and it was just indescribable pain, but yeah. It was, it was quick, it was like one or two seconds and it was all done. So I thought that was like way better than getting stitches and telling a doctor that I was trying to use power tools to route a control cavity into a piece of wood that I had used a jigsaw to chop off of an antique desk in hopes of turning it into a guitar because I had smoked too much weed. It was just, and it was a lot. Those were different times. That was 2009. Those were different times. They were better times. They were, it was a different chapter in my life. Actually, no, because my, my life is not a book. It was a different time. Anyway, I have gone on long enough to the point where if I wanted to watch this whole thing, it would cure my insomnia if I kind of still had it. Ah, bug, 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 bug. Ugh. Man, I like this thing, this uh, live stuff, because... I just don't shut up, I guess. I just don't shut up. 